Now that we know a little bit about oxidation and reduction, what I want to do is think is is really just do an exercise to just make sure that we can at least give our best shot at figuring out the oxidation states for the constituent atoms inside of a or that make up a compound. So for example, here I have magnesium oxide which is used in cement and has other applications and this is magnesium hydroxide which is actually used in in antacids it's used in deodorant and what i want you to think about and i encourage you to pause this video right now is given these two molecules these two compounds and what we know about the periodic table try to come up with the oxidation states for the different elements in each of these compounds So I'm assuming you've given a go at it. Now let's try to work through this or think through this together. So first of all, magnesium. Magnesium right over here, we see it's group 2. It's an alkaline earth metal. It has two valence electrons. It's not that electronegative. We've already seen that something in this group right over here with two valence electrons, it's likely to give them away. So if it were to form ionic bonds or if it were to be ionized, it's likely to lose two electrons. If you lose two electrons, you would have a plus 2 charge. So magnesium would typically have a plus 2 oxidation state. On the other side of the periodic table, oxygen group 7. It has 6 valence electrons. It's very electronegative, so electronegative that oxidation is named for it. It likes to take electrons from other elements. And oxygen in particular likes to take two electrons. So it's not unusual to see actually anything in this group, but especially oxygen taking two electrons from something else. If you take two electrons and you start it off neutrally or you start in a neutral state, it's not unusual to see oxygen at a negative 2 oxidation state. So given that, it seems like this could work out. Magnesium could have a positive 2 positive 2 oxidation state. And actually when you write it as a superscript here, the convention is to write the positive after the 2. And oxygen would have or could have a negative 2 oxidation state and this makes sense relative to the overall charge of the molecule positive 2 plus negative 2 is going to be 0 and that makes sense this thing overall is a neutral molecule and not only in this case is the oxidation state a hypothetical ionic charge if these were to be ionic bonds this actually is an ionic compound oxygen actually does take two electrons and magnesium actually does give away two electrons so in this case the oxidation state is actually describing what is happening ionically now let's think about this one right over here magnesium hydroxide Well, just like before, magnesium typically has an oxidation state, likes to give away its electrons. So it could have an oxidation state of positive 2. Oxidation state of positive 2, which would imply that the entire hydroxide anion, and let's think about, or let's just say hydroxide for now. Well, I'll say hydroxide anion. I kind of gave it away a little bit. That this hydroxide, that, or this part of the molecule, the right-hand part of what I've written here, should for this whole thing to be neutral it should have a negative 2 oxidation state now how does that make sense well we have two we have two hydroxides here notice the subscript right over here so if each of those hydroxides has a negative 1 negative 1 charge or a negative 1 i guess you could say total oxidation state then when you sum when you take the two of them together they would net out against the magnesium and that does seem to make sense If oxygen has a negative 2 oxidation state, hydrogen has a positive 1 oxidation state. Each each hydroxide part of this molecule is going to have a net oxidation state of negative 1, but then you have two of them, so the net oxidation for this part of the molecule or the compound is going to be negative 2, nets out with the positive 2 from magnesium. So once again, it makes sense.